Beneath the aurora was shot in numerous locations around Alaska within hiking distance from the main roads over a period of three years. Alaska offers rich opportunities for capturing stunning footage of a variety of breathtaking natural displays. Most aurora footage was captured north and east of Fairbanks, where the aurora can be observed most frequently. From Fairbanks, driving northeast not only brings the aurora a little closer, but more importantly, light pollution is left to the south and west, meaning the sky is dark and clear in the direction of the aurora. If driving as far north as the Brooks Range, the aurora may be observed overhead or to the south much more frequently. When the bottom of the aurora is about 15 degrees above the horizon as seen from Fairbanks, it is overhead in the Brooks Range 200 miles farther north. All footage was captured as still images on DSLR cameras. A sequence of still images is then combined to provide a video clip. Such videos are referred to as time-lapse because they speed up the passage of time. For example, if the camera was set to take a photo every two and a half seconds and a video displays 24 images per second, then one second of video corresponds to one minute of real time. In other words, time has been sped up by a factor of 60. In the film, the factor by which time has been compressed varies between clips from about 10 and up to around 360, which means six minutes of real time per second of video. Using time-lapse footage shot with DSLR cameras has several advantages. For shooting Aurora, time-lapse is necessary because it allows the use of long exposure times, which can be chosen according to the Aurora and the type of footage desired. The aurora is highly variable both in terms of brightness and how quickly it changes. With time-lapse, it is possible to capture most of this variety and present it in videos at a pace that is comfortable to follow, revealing features not visible to the naked eye. Another advantage is that photos from DSLRs have significantly higher resolution than the 1920 by 1080 pixels used to produce the film. This allows for pan and zoom effects to be applied to the footage, adding a sense of motion. Not all movement was created in post-processing, however. For some shots, the camera was mounted on a motor drive, rotating or moving the camera slowly during a photo sequence. The main disadvantage of DSLR time-lapse footage is that it may give a wrong impression of what the Aurora looks like when seeing it live. Not only is time compressed, but in low light, cameras are able to capture colors and details beyond what is visible to the naked eye. Nighttime time-lapse videos also reveal an abundance of satellites. Many people are surprised not only by the sheer number of them, but also because they had mistaken them for shooting stars. While shooting stars do appear in the videos, they are very difficult to spot. Their trails glow only momentarily, leaving a streak of light in just one single photo out of the 24 per second shown in the videos. This exemplifies that time-lapse is especially good for revealing the motion of slow-moving objects. Conversely, it also obscures fast-moving and fleeting subjects such as shooting stars. Literally, they will pass you by in the blink of an eye. Those who have spent time in remote wilderness can testify that it brings profound peace of mind. 
Today, however, a vast majority of people live in highly developed environments and rarely, if ever, have the opportunity to visit pristine nature. Watching the aurora has a similarly calming effect, especially in a remote and quiet setting, but again, very few people actually do. Even those who live where it's possible are mostly too busy to make the effort. Beneath the Aurora is intended to allow a wider audience to share the feeling of serenity that these scenes originally evoked. However, it's no substitute for the true experience. Enjoy the film, but if you can, find out for yourself what it's like to stand beneath the Aurora. <laughs>